Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking UFO scene using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to find our stock footage. So I'm just going to Pexels here and I've just downloaded this clip uh, from Artem Zukov. So you can download that and then import it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine. 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. We'll just press okay. The next thing that I need to do is I need to import my clip. So I'm just gonna right click and go import. And now I've got my clip in here. So I'm just going to drag it to my timeline. Now this clip will be also in the description. This is a 1920 by 1080 um, pixel version of that original clip. And what I'm going to do is now we need to actually add in our UFO. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move to this part of the timeline and then I'm just going to go up to composition. I'm going to go save frame as and I'm going to click on Photoshop layers and that's going to create a PSD. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and this was my original UFO that I used, but I'll just show you how I created that. So all you need to do is you just need to grab the lasso tool and then draw a selection where you want the UFO to be. And then if you just go down to generative fill, you can write whatever you want. So I'm just gonna write circular with uh, blue lights. And then once you're happy with your um, text, you can just generate it. Cool, so now it's generated uh, three of those images. Now they don't look exactly like that first one, which is okay. But what I am going to do is I'm just gonna show you how I cut it out. So the easiest thing to do to cut this out is to just go and grab the quick selection tool. And then you can draw around the actual UFO. And then if you press Command J, it will create that into a new layer. So I've got my layer here. So all I really need is just that export it as a PNG file. So if you just go to file export um, and you can save that as a PNG and then bring it back into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna import that file and I'm just gonna drag it to my timeline and I'm just gonna place it where I want. I need to press S for scale. And I'll just bring it down and I'll just put it in there somewhere. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to open up the camera tracker, make sure that I'm on my video layer and then all I have to do is make sure I'm on the first frame and then just press track camera. Cool. So now that you have your footage tracked, what you need to do is I'm just gonna pick, um, you know, some of these points over there that kind of faces towards me. So I'm gonna pick these points over here. I'm gonna go to create null and camera. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my alien UFO and make sure that I make it a 3D layer. And then if you don't see the 3D layers, you can always go toggle switches. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the size to maybe something uh, something like that. And then we're gonna see how it looks tracked through. So what we need to do is we need to push it back into Z space. So if I press P on my keyboard, and then if I just write a value in here, maybe 12,000, all right, that will push it to about there and then we will have it. Now you don't want it to go too crazy over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep pushing that back, you know, until I'm happy with where it's going to sit. So maybe around, I don't know, 15,000, something like that, I think will look pretty cool. And it goes from about there. So now what we need to do is we need to mask that out. Cool, so now once you've done that, what we need to do is we need to create a mask. So I'm just gonna click on that UFO layer and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab the pen tool and I'm just gonna quickly draw a mask just around that rocky area over there. And it doesn't have to be super perfect, but the more time you spend on this, the better. And then what you need to do is you need to press M for your mask settings. You need to click on inverted and you get the kind of idea over here. I'm just gonna increase the feather to maybe let's say something like 30, just so it's a little bit softer there. And if you need to rearrange and change any of those uh, mask settings, you can. And if you click and hold, then you can start to create curves with you know something like this. But now what we need to do is we need to animate that mask path. So if we just open up the mask path again, click on that stopwatch, move forward in time, let's say one second, and I'm just gonna move it over till it's just like that. And then you gotta keep going until the UFO is visible.
Cool. So now once you have that, now you've got that little mask cut out. And if you need to go back and change anything, for example, you don't like how it looks there, you can always go and change that up. Again, it doesn't have to be that perfect, but as long as you get a clean look to the UFO uh, once it gets over here. Cool. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create some fog. So I'm just going to right click, make a new solid. I'm going to call that fog, make sure that it's white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the pen tool and I'm just going to draw a very simple shape for something that kind of mimics fog. So I'm pretty happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to press F for feather and I'm just going to bring that up to let's say 350. All right. So it looks, you know, something like that. The next thing that I need to do is I need to add an effect called rough and edges and I'm just going to bring up the border to about 250. I'm also going to bring up the scale to also about 250 and I'm going to animate the evolution. So if I hold option, click on that uh, evolution stopwatch and write time times 80. All right, now it's going to move. But it still doesn't look like fog. But if we add some fast box blur, and then if we really bump that up to maybe something like, I don't know, 150, something like that. Now we've got this cool kind of, you know, misty, you know, thing happening over there. So now what we need to do is we just need to make sure that we change that into a 3D layer. All right, so now that will go with the tracked camera and we can move it around to wherever we want. So we can increase the scale, you know, put the scale wherever we want. We can make some duplicate copies of it and we can, if I press P and if I send that back in Z space, so let's say we put this one maybe 6,000, all right, and then we increase the size over there and you can even increase the shape if you want as well. And I'll just do one more. So I'll just put that one down here and I'm just going to press P and this one I'll put back to let's say 10,000. I push it even further back and I increase the scale something like that. So now you've got all these things you know kind of working together and that's looking pretty cool just like that. So now the other thing that you can do is you can download this uh, you know green screen um, clouds from Vecteasy as well. So if I put that in there and if I drag that to my composition, all right, now make it a 3D layer, but on this, I'll need to use key light, you know, to remove the green screen, just like that. I'll change the opacity. I'll bring the opacity down, maybe 50%, 60%, and I'll change the size as well. And I'll also turn that into a 3D layer. And I'll just, you know, put that over there and I'll keep sending that back in 3D space. Cool, so now once you have that, the next thing that I did is I added some glow on the UFO. So you can play around with some of the settings, but I think that looks pretty cool. And I also added some noise as well. So I bumped up the noise to about, I don't know, 15%, something like that. Makes it look a little bit more grainy and I think that looks pretty cool. The only other thing that I did in here is I added the lightning in the background. So I'll show you how to do that. If you go into your project settings and then you import your lightning clip. And once you have your lightning clip, then what you can do is you can just drag it to the top of that timeline and you can see what it looks like there. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it um, extend it to the entire composition. So to do that, if you go into time and then if you go into time stretch and we want to stretch that to about 15 seconds. All right, press OK. So now you have a clip that goes the entire duration. I am just going to scale that down until it fits nicely like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit T for opacity turn that down you know a little bit and then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we mask all that out so i'll show you how to do that again all you have to do is just grab the pen tool and then cut out the area that you do not want so cool same thing you know all we have to do is just press m for the mask path all right and we'll actually increase the feather bring the feather up to maybe let's say 150 something like that and you can see when you click inverted what actually happens. So we want to focus on that area there. We're going to click M for mask path and then we're just going to animate the path. 
cool. So now once you got that, you know, you can always just go back to feather and then just feather a little bit more out so it's not that noticeable. And then what we can do is we can just, you know, um, change some of the color settings in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to drop it down to probably about 30% opacity. And then we're going to run some curves on that. So I'm just going to bring that down a bit just so it looks something like that. And so, yeah, you've got a bit of colors in the background. I think that looks pretty cool. We can even drop it down even more. So maybe the opacity down to about 15%. And what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it underneath the alien ship, just like that. So when it does uh, thunder, it's behind the ship. And that looks pretty cool. The other thing that I did was I animated the ship. So once it got to probably about here, so now all I did is I just pressed P for position. I hit that stopwatch there and then I'll just move to the end of that composition and I'll just change this to let's say 1 million. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And that will put it off into the distance just like that. And so that looks pretty cool. And it kind of zooms off just like that. Nice. And then the final things that I did in here is I added an adjustment layer. So if you create an adjustment layer and you add some Lumetri color in here. So once you add the adjustment layer, then all I did is I searched for an effect called Lumetri color. I just went to creative and I changed the look to, let's say, um, SL gold heat. All right, and I'm just gonna bring that down to probably about, I don't know, 60%. And the final thing that I added in here was some noise overall for everything. So if you add probably about 10% noise, you know, you give it a bit of grain and that's basically it. And I guess the last thing that you could add is another adjustment layer. And on top of that adjustment layer, you can put some CC vignette and you can, you know, make the edges a little bit darker if you like. But that's basically it. So now we've created a cool UFO scene that has, you know, a bit of lightning in the background and a little bit of masking in terms of the rocks and things like that. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this tutorial on how to create a UFO scene in After Effects. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.